right, guys, so like I just said earlier today, we are here to talk about increased work capacity. So over the next few months, I'm gonna be taking on basically five tests of fitness. It's an ultimate fitness project uh, starting in May with a 50 mile ultra marathon. Then in June, I'll have a Spartan race. Then we're gonna go on to the world's strongest triathlon in July. Then in August, we're into a 120 ultra marathon in Vancouver, then a 200 mile ultra marathon called the Lake Tahoe 200 in California. So the idea is how can I increase my work capacity while staying very healthy <clears throat> and keeping that intensity up while I'm doing a variety of different sports. And what work capacity basically means is my capacity to involve myself in fitness or some sort of work without gassing out. So how do I improve that system so I can do more longer at a higher intensity over a longer period of time? So I have five separate ways that I personally love to increase my work capacity. I did, I played around a lot of this stuff during my 365 day challenge last year. So here are the five ways that you can increase your work capacity today and tomorrow and next week. First one is we're gonna add volume. So this is the simplest aspect. So say you're doing a 30 minute workout four times a week right now. The next best thing you can do is maybe make that a 40 minute workout five times a week. Or maybe we do a 45 minute workout or an hour workout the week after. We slowly just add time into the exercise. If you're doing a 20 minute walk right now and we start making that a 40 minute walk, we're slowly adding work, our work capacity or increasing our work capacity through the volume of our work, right? We're just multiplying and adding on time, which adds a longer duration to the activity or exercise. Second one is reps. So this is actually a really easy way to increase our work capacity. And let's just say a popular exercise is bench press. So if I want to increase my work capacity on bench press, hypothetically, I might do three sets of eight. Okay. For I do this for two weeks or three weeks or so, I can slowly just start adding reps into my routine. I can make that four sets of eight, or I can do three sets of eight with that last set being a fourth set of just a couple more reps. So without complicating the situation, we're just adding reps to our <clears throat> exercise. It can be one a week, two a week, and before we know it, that three sets of eight becomes three sets of 15, or three sets of 20. And we slowly keep doing this, and all of a sudden our work capacity increases with that weight. So if I wanna get stronger pushing 225 pounds, I might do two weeks for three sets of eight. But then next week, I'm going to add in a rep. I try to do three sets of nine, then three sets of ten two weeks after. And of course, we add in a whole bunch of different exercises in between, but that's a great way to increase our work capacity by just adding one rep or one set at a time. So again, I can add that set just as easy. I can do three sets of eight, <clears throat> and then my fourth set is a set of, say, four or five or whatever I can get. I get another set of eight. That's fantastic. At that point, we probably know we can add a little bit more weight or add some repetitions on. But if that fourth set's really difficult, we might just do a set of three, you know, with three repetitions or, or four repetitions, and we slowly add on until we get four sets of eight. Really easy, fun way to do it, but again, that's what you want to do. You want to get the body, there's a lot of progressive overload that we constantly put more weight or more stress or more volume into what we're doing in our work capacity increase. So that's two ways so far. Next one is the intensity. If I want to increase my work capacity, the intensity is a very easy way to do that. A lot of times people go to moderate intensity, that 60 to 70% range. If I want to increase the amount of, I guess, effort I can uh, give during a workout, I just increase my intensity. That's like going from a jog to a moderate sprint to a full out sprint. That's a fantastic way to get your body adapted and your heart and your lungs and the blood pumping uh, properly and efficiently for you to do more work at a more effective rate. So. I'm a big advocate of this one. I want to work smart rather than hard. So if I can increase my intensity through the exercises in which I'm doing, I'm going to increase my work capacity at a lot faster rate. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of moderate intensity exercise all the time. You can do a lot with adding our intensity, increasing our intensity. The volume is actually going to go down with this one. So I can actually increase my intensity and take the volume away. What I mean by that is that we can go from a 40 minute moderate workout to a 20 minute more intense workout, and that can have the same effect on that in work capacity level. So again, another way to play around with it, if you're again, if you're doing a 35 to 45 minute workout at moderate intensity, if we level that up to make it more of an 85 to 90% range, our heart rate's a little bit higher, we're getting over our VO2 max, or maybe get to the, to the limit, 
That's a great way to obviously get that work capacity really moving forward and through that, you're gonna see a lot better and more efficient results a lot quicker. Fourth way, now this one I actually love because there's not a lot of stress in the body. You don't gotta do too much or too little. What you can do here is the variety of sport that you choose. So last year there was a time where I had 30 days of a certain specific exercise I had to do. Let's just say that was ultra marathon training. So there were longer days of maybe a 10 mile or a 15 mile run. And even on the shorter days, I'm doing a six mile run. I can increase my work capacity by doing a completely different sport that puts stress on a different aspect of my body or mind. So with that, I was doing some days of running. I would do swimming, which again is a whole different aerobic capacity. But again, I'm not putting stress on my ligaments or my tendons. Uh, but again, I am increasing my aerobic capacity and threshold. I'd also grapple or I think I do jujitsu. No, sorry, sorry. Kickboxing. Right? So I do kickboxing. I would do swimming, I would do weights, and I would do running all in the same day. So that was four separate workouts in one day. The reason my body could handle that was that I was increasing my work capacity with different sports, a variety of different exercises that put stresses on different aspects. The kickboxing, a little bit more conditioning oriented, a little bit more technique oriented. The swimming was more aerobic, but again, there was no stress on my ligaments or my tendons or my muscles. Resistance training, again, I was putting on a little bit more muscle, adding on the strength, uh, developing my body in that realm. And then the running was much more specific. It was glute work. It was hip work. It was getting my body used to the feet on the pavement. So, again, that was a fantastic way for me to increase my work capacity. I was, wasn't pushing myself three times in the weight room. That's not very effective. It's actually quite detrimental to my recovery process to actually put on lean muscle mass and strength. So what I would say was if you want to increase your work capacity, you can do a little workout in the morning. You can go for a run at night. It's not practical to do four workouts. It's probably not necessary either, right? So what you can do, again, go for that run in the morning or that weightlifting session in the morning, and that night you flip it around. You're going to increase your work capacity by just doing that. You're going to have a good enough separation. We're not putting a lot of stress and strain on the ligaments and the tendons that you're trying to obviously repair so they come back bigger, faster, and stronger. So it's a great way, if you, again, if you want that intensity, and that volume, and that work capacity to increase, play around with a variety of workouts and throw them in. One day it can be swimming and resistance training. The next day it can be running and resist resistance training. One day it can be pure grappling. And I know even last week for me I had a grappling session, I had a sprint session, and I also had a hit training session. So three different aspects. They weren't very long. In total, the workouts probably lasted me, I want to say, you know, 35, 45 minutes for the three workouts in total. But I was increasing my work capacity by going at a high intensity in three different sports, whereas I could push myself because I wasn't putting added stress onto a muscle or aspect of my body because there was a good variety to that. And then the fourth one is time frames of activity. Now, this is where you can play around with it, where you spread those workouts out. All right, I can have a time frame of working out in the morning, working out at night, working out at lunch. Again, Kobe Bryant said this perfectly. His edge on becoming the best basketball player in the world was his ability to time his workouts out efficiently. He would get up early in the morning around 4 or 5. His first workout would be in at 5.30 or 6. He uh, he would have ample enough time to go home, refuel, re-energize, maybe even get a little nap in, recover his body for his afternoon 1 or 2 p.m. workout. From there, he would have the same ability to go home, rest, hang out with his family, digest uh, the food he needs to digest, recover uh, appropriately, get the supplements in, and the micronutrients, the macronutrients, to give him the energy to sustain him through that third workout in the PM. So at that time, he'd have another workout at 7 or 8 o'clock at night. That could be going from shooting hoops to a resistant workout, doing some cardio. So he was adding in not only more volume, he was adding in potentially more intensity, he was adding a variety of sport, and then he had the different time frames. So he was doing it all, but the time frames allowed him to recover, adapt, get used to the stimuli and the stress that he was putting on his body, and come back at a fully you know, healthy body and mind. If you're trying to do all those three, three things back to back, you're not giving your body enough chance to really adapt and get the fuel necessary to get the most benefits out of the first workout. And you don't ever want a one workout to go to the wayside because you're trying to do too much. I'm not a huge advocate of a three hour or one and a half hour workout. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to spend your time. You are wanting to add in a run plus some weights, spread it out a bit, allow your body to adapt so the intensity can increase from your run rather than having to go through a half-assed run 
after your tiring weight session. I'd much rather you go home, recover, fuel up, get the most efficient aspects of you know, nutrients and, and minerals back into your system, get your glycogen stores back up, or whether you're on a fat-based diet, get the fat you need in your body to obviously put that into the afternoon or the PM session. So again, those five ways to increase our work capacity are as follows. We have the volume, we have repetition, we have the intensity, we have the variety of sport, and of course we have the time frames of the activity. You can add in any five of these realms which will help you increase your work capacity and make you more efficient uh, athlete and performer, and of course help you in your fitness journey. Hope this helps guys.